Hi, I'm Shona. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager at Geoscience Australia. Geoscience Australia brings together experts in Australia's geology and geography. In this series, we're going to explore some of Australia's landscapes and landforms. We're going to learn about some of their features and the processes that shape them. We're also going to think about how landscapes and landforms are valued and the ways humans impact and protect them. This is the second of two videos about fieldwork. In this one, we're going to answer a research question by looking at a local landscape and doing some fieldwork activities. How was your brainstorm? Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Did you think of some good sub-questions to help us to answer the research question? Yes. Yeah. Yes! What was that research question again? What could be done to maintain this landscape into the future? Did you also come up with some investigations and activities? Things that you could do to help to answer your sub-questions? Mm -hmm. Great! Some of the activities you noted down might be things like researching data that other people have collected and written about. This is called collecting secondary data. You might check out the location and size of your landscape using Google Earth, or research what people have written online about who's responsible for looking after that landscape now. You probably also came up with some activities or some fieldwork to do when you visit your chosen landscape. When you collect information yourself, it's called primary data collection. And it's this primary data collection in the field that we're interested in now. We're going to do three fieldwork activities. These activities will give us information to answer the sub-questions and our research question. Firstly, we're going to do a field sketch. This will help us to focus on the features of the landscape as they are now and the processes that are shaping it. Then we're going to do an activity survey. This will help us to understand how the landscape is being used. And then we're going to look for evidence of the human impacts on the landscape and take some photos. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, get into groups of three or four. You ready? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Great! So, field sketching. Firstly, what is it? A field sketch is a drawing that helps us understand the environment we're studying. Which is important if we're trying to answer a question about a particular landscape. But why not just take a photo? I'm glad you asked. While taking photos of a place can be useful, the great thing about drawing a field sketch is that you can use it to answer a question. We're going to use our field sketch to answer the sub-question, what has shaped this landscape? We'll do this by focusing on the most relevant things we can see, and by adding annotations to the sketch. Annotations are notes that describe or explain parts of the sketch, but more on those a bit later. What is that? It looks like an oasis. Yes, that's what it is. And that's what you need to think about when you're getting ready to do a field sketch. Huh? Mm -hmm. OK, well, not that oasis in particular, oh. but the letters O-A-S-I-S. -S. These letters all stand for important things you need to include in your field sketch. The O stands for orientation. The A is annotation, S is for scale, I is information, and the last S is for sketch what you see. You get it? Uh -huh. hmm. Let's go through them one at a time. Although the word to remember is oasis, I'm going to start with the I for information. Before you start drawing, add some information to your page. Give your sketch a title, add the location, and add the date and time of your drawing. Why might this information be important? Well, that's because conditions might not always be the same at your location, so it's important to be specific about when you were there. OK, let's jump to O for orientation. Think about the orientation of the area you're about to sketch. Which way is north? Add a little arrow telling us. 
Or you might like to note down the direction you're facing when you do your sketch. S. Scale. Add a scale to your sketch. What will one centimetre or five centimetres on your drawing represent in the real world? And how will you measure your distances in the field? If you don't have a tape measure, maybe one centimetre on the page could represent one big stride, or a foot length, or even your friend's height. Think about how big the area is that you want to sketch and work out the best way to measure it in the real world and on your page. S again. Sketch what you see. What is your view of the landscape? Remember, you're not drawing a map or an aerial view looking down on your landscape. Your field sketch is a sketch of what you see in front of you. What are the main landform features or shapes in your landscape? Is there a hill or a mountain? Is the land flat? Does the land slope down towards the ocean or a creek or a river channel? Start by sketching the outlines of the shapes you can see and identify them. Remember, your sketch doesn't need to be a work of art, just a simple drawing of the outlines of the shapes in the landscape. Lastly, A, annotation. The annotations we add to a field sketch should be at least a sentence long and they should add information that helps us answer the research question or sub-question. So, if the question we're answering is, what has shaped this landscape? You might want to label the landforms you can see and then add annotations to explain how you think they've been shaped. Look for clues in the environment. Remember, there are many things that can shape a landscape. Processes like weathering, erosion and deposition and human impacts as well. Once you've done your sketch, have a look at it and think about the natural processes and human impacts that might continue to shape this landscape into the future. What could be done to maintain this landscape if these processes continue? Do you think anything needs to change? Note down your thoughts. What's that oasis doing back here? I think it's here to remind us about orientation and... Annotation. Scale. Information. Um, just kidding. Sketch what you see. Perfect. So that's field sketching. Done. An activity survey gives us information about how a landscape is used. Why would this kind of survey be a useful thing to do as part of our fieldwork? Well, if we're trying to think about how a place might be well maintained in the future, we might need to start by understanding how it's used today. Mm. Yes. Yeah. How many people use this place? Mm. And how do they use it? Mm. So, get comfortable and for 10 or 15 minutes, observe your area and collect some data. Keep a tally on how many people move through it and what activities those people are doing. Are they sitting down to read? Are they swimming or cycling? Maybe having lunch? Or are they working? Or are they just going for a walk? So get comfortable and for 10 or 15 minutes observe your area and collect some data. Next, create a graph that shows how people were using the landscape. Making a bar graph would be a good way to do that. Now, summarise your findings in words, answering the question, how is this place used today? Once you've done that, have a think about how this place might be used into the future. Hmm. Hmm. Do you think it will be used in a similar way as it is today? Hmm. Or do you think people might use it differently in the future? Uh. How might this influence the future maintenance of this landscape? Hmm. Uh. Make some notes. Activity survey done. Hooray! We're going to look for evidence of the impacts of people's use of this landscape and Hooray. take some photos. What can you see? Has the walking route that people take worn a path on the land? Yes! Yes. yes. Has rubbish been left behind? Yeah. yeah! Yeah! Are people's pets or vehicles impacting the landscape or its landforms? 
Hmm. Take some photos of what you see to show how the landscape is being used and impacted by people. Photos are an essential element in any fieldwork display as they help to convey your research and provide examples. They also appeal to the viewer. For each photo you take, write a sentence or two that describes what the photo illustrates about the impact people have had on the landscape. You can use these sentences as captions near your photos when you make your fieldwork display. Once that's done, have a think about how the impact of visitors is being managed at the moment. Is the landscape you're in a natural or a constructed place? Yeah! What sorts of constructed things do you notice in the landscape? Think about footpaths, fences, steps, signs, car parks, toilets, Tables and chairs, rubbish bins. Will any of the constructed things you can see need to change or be improved somehow in order to maintain this landscape into the future? Make notes of your ideas using what you've seen of the human impacts and their management to support your point of view. You could even do some research and provide examples of how your suggestions have worked in similar landscapes. How could changes that have been put into place in other locations be adapted to your location? Great work, geographers! <laughs> By doing these fieldwork activities, you've been able to investigate some of your sub-questions. This has helped you to answer your research question. The primary data you've gathered from your fieldwork can be added to your fieldwork display, along with any secondary data that you've gathered as well. Think about the research question again. What could be done to maintain this landscape into the future? How does all the information on your display, together with the notes that you've made, help you to answer this question? Have a class or group discussion and then decide on your answer. At this stage of your fieldwork investigation, you have to think carefully and evaluate your ideas. This means considering their advantages and disadvantages. In writing an answer, you should determine which factors are most important in your opinion and make a judgment call. Justify your opinion by supporting it with the data and research you have collected. Your final statement answering the research question should show that you've come to a decision and explain the reasons for making that decision. Show off your strong reasoning and critical thinking skills, geographers. Now, write up your conclusive statement for your fieldwork display. Then, evaluate your methods. Were the activities you did helpful in finding an answer to your research questions? Why? Or why not? What would you do differently next time? You're done, geographers. Congratulations. <laughs>